So this is some blueberry blossom honey from Doing the Most, who he uh, ordered some recently and he was gracious enough to give it to me. I've never used this kind of honey, but apparently it's very high quality. So this honey itself, I can tell it's very high quality because you can see some um, bits of floating things, dead bee and that stuff, meaning it's unfiltered, definitely unpasteurized. So it should be very, very nice. Let's give it a taste. Whoa, that is incredible. That's got some serious, um, it's got some meadow foamy taste to me. It's that bright kind of marshmallow cotton candy. Um, definitely has a very fruity taste to it. Of course, blueberry. Yeah, it's still, it's like a mixture, a good mixture between a really light and a dark honey. Um, that's incredible. Oh man. Okay, so here's my plan for this. I am gonna make a half gallon batch ultimately because I am trying to save space right now. I wanna test this, but I don't wanna take up a ton of space because I have a lot of things going on. So um, I am going to use the half gallon recipe right here. So my half gallon recipe is a half gallon of water and a pound of this blueberry blossom honey and some Lauvin QA23. So this is uh, a great yeast for traditionals. It is a clean fermenter and it doesn't ferment too fast. So it doesn't kick off any aromas that are necessary for a traditional mead. There's also right here the uh, one gallon recipe if you wanted to do this in a bigger batch. Of course, multiply as you need. Uh, for your bigger batches. Step one, sanitize everything. This is star sand water. I've already sanitized my uh, containers and done all this stuff. I'm going to uh, rehydrate a little bit of yeast. In fact, I'm gonna use two grams of yeast. So let me do that. All right, here's my two grams of yeast. They're rehydrating in some just spring water we're using. Now, let's go ahead and mix our ingredients in and um, get, a, get our original gravity, do all that stuff. All right, this is mixed in. Um, I am gonna go ahead and to get a, the most accurate gravity reading, I will pitch my yeast here in a second, but I do wanna give this some uh, extra nutrition. So I'm adding some GoFirm, not GoFirm, excuse me, Firmax, which is uh, like similar to DAP, it adds nitrogen. It's got some yeast holes in it, so it's just food for yeast, which will help it ferment. Let's go ahead and pitch our yeast in because that will help us, of course, get this and make this into a mead. And let me stir it one more time and we'll take a gravity reading. All right, original gravity or starting gravity is 1.048. So we're roughly at about a 6.4-ish mead, 6.5 I think. I'll put it right there. Now our next step is going to be to throw an airlock on this thing and let it start fermenting because the yeast obviously uh, will kick, hopefully kick in in the next 24 to 48 hours. And when they do, they eat the sugars. That's how alcohol is made. Um, I don't need to go into the, in depth with that, but. After the primary, we'll t we will taste test it. Probably need to add some more blueberry blossom honey if the rest of it has kind of faded. Um, and then we'll rack it over into this half gallon carboy for it to age in for a while. So let's go ahead and go through the primary. And we're back with the blueberry blossom mead. It has been exactly nine days since we did anything with this thing. So this is, of course, the mead at a very young state. Um, it is done fermenting. I know that because I watched it. It started to clear up pretty quickly. The yeast blew through all of the honey. So it's pretty low gravity in the first place, 1.048 to start. Our current gravity after primary fermentation is um, 1.000. So we have leveled out again. We're setting a roughly like a 6.2% mead, something like that. So. I think it's gonna be pretty interesting. I haven't taste tested it yet, so let's let's do that. Again, this is a very, very young state of this mead. It's still degassing even as I pour it and things, so um, I expect a yeasty taste. I expect some flaws for sure. Yeah, it's definitely got a yeasty smell to it. Mm, very, um, a little bit of a tart, but tart and sweet. Definitely like that blueberry, when you taste a blueberry, you have tartness and you have sweetness combined. Getting that on the nose. Let's taste it. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's fantastic. You definitely get, like I was saying, that tart and sweet um, blueberry taste. More tart on the pal more tart on the taste than um, on the nose, but definitely has some yeasty taste. It's um, a little bit boozy. You can feel the ABV on it. Um, so it hasn't mellowed out. Obviously, 
and nine days is not a lot of time. Ooh. I mean, this thing's, for, for nine days old, it's decently smooth. It's got some slight carbonation because of the uh, degassing state. Yeah, that, um, that blueberry honey is quality. And I think the big difference with using, of course, nicer honey is you get a greater product. I am getting a warmer honey character from the start. I'm getting a more true sweetness from the honey, meaning that I'm getting like actual perceived or actual sweetness, well, perceived sweetness, even though this thing is dry. That's a, that is the mark of a good quality honey. So, oh man, that's great. Let me rack this thing over and then I'll tell you my next step. All right, here is our moved over product. The good news about um, making more than a half gallon in your primary fermentation is that if you want to end up with a half gallon, you do. So this is exactly a half gallon of our mead that will continue to age. And I am adding to a house blend. So I added the extra to this house blend that is currently a coffee blossom and blueberry blossom. And it will continue to be um, added. It'll be interesting. Uh, my next step is going to be to let this thing age for a couple weeks. Then we'll probably come back and um, end up stabilizing and back sweetening this thing because I want to keep it about the same ABV. I think that six point whatever two or three percent I said is a great point. It's hydromel range. Um, there is well we might end up carbonating this thing. I don't know. I got to think about it some. So here's fast forward to the future when I figure out what I want to do with it now. All right, we're back. This mead is currently about two and a half months old. And uh, I think that it's probably gonna need back sweetening, but let's taste test it. Ooh, yeah, definitely dry, but the character of the honey is there, which is really nice. It um, has a, a very, very, very uh, feel and taste to it. I get the dark berry slash um, brightness that you can sometimes have with a blueberry which is the floral I'm getting. Yeah, this just needs some back sweetening. Good news is we've stabilized it already a couple weeks ago. So now I'm going to add as much as my blueberry blossom honey I want to get it to the sweetness level that, that I desire. And then I'll tell you how much I added. All right, I've added three ounces of honey to this, which is a fifth of a pound, roughly, a little less than a fifth, or over, whatever it is. Definitely pronounce that blueberry flavor, floral sides popping. This thing's fantastic. Um, what it really needs, it just needs time. Um, it, it has the crispness, it has the bite that I like, uh, it has the warmth from the honey, has everything, it just needs time. However, I don't wanna age it in this, I wanna age it into in some actual bottles, so, I think it's fantastic. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stick my airlock back onto this thing. We are going to um, ensure that it's done fermenting by letting it sit for another 24 hours. If there's more fermentation, then we know the yeast were not stabilized and therefore we don't wanna bottle that. So we're just gonna make sure that that's okay. Um, I'll tell you this, I would normally take a gravity reading post back sweetening, but I'm currently using my hydrometer and it's floating in a something for a video, so my guess is this probably is at 1.010, uh, roughly, the, with the new gravity, and I think that's, that's okay. So let me wait 24 hours, and then we are going to come back and bottle it and do all the things that we need to now. Okay, this is set for two weeks. I have not seen any re-fermentation. It still tastes the same way, I remember. Oh yeah, that's the perfect level sweetness for me. Um, haziness, it's still hazy. To be honest with you, this being homebrew and knowing that I and maybe some friends are gonna drink it, I'm not too worried about clarity. If I were gonna give this as gifts or go commercial, I would wanna really depend on clarity and, and do more with that, which there are some things you can do. You could cold crash, which kind of helps. You can also use some things like uh, dual fine, bentonite, sparkaloid, um, filtering, all that stuff. I don't care. I'm gonna go ahead and bottle this. Of course, everything is sanitized. Got my star sand water, all that right here. Let me bottle every single one of these. And then, oh, actually, I remember I didn't get to do a gravity reading on this because my hydrometer was in use. The 
prime or the original gravity was 1.048 after the primary was 1.000 we are currently at 1.012 so we have gone up a fair amount of sweetness it's obviously stayed there over two weeks um so we are we're good to go with that i'm gonna go ahead and bottle the next Okay, that's the end. There are a grand total of three beer bottles and one 750 milliliter wine bottle. I have a temporary label on them. Ultimately, I'll have something like this. You'll see on the screen, like it on instead. I just haven't printed those out. Now, this um, recipe is small, it's for a half gallon. You can multiply by whatever size you wanna do. If you wanna do a six gallon batch of this, take the recipe right here and multiply it by six. Well, right, yes, math. Something like that. Anyways, um, multiply it by that. Make as big of a batch. Uh, I beat by 12. I can't let myself go, go wrong there. So uh, multiply. Make a big batch of the mead if you'd like. This honey was incredible, and I think that's the most important thing to highlight here. When you make a traditional mead, in order to get the best uh, possible product, you have to have the best and nicest honey. If you use some cheap honey that is possibly um, not raw or is filtered or is you know whatever uh, you're gonna have a product that um, matches that so not to say that you can't make a a cheap traditional a good traditional meat for cheap i'm just saying your honey makes a big difference so make sure you invest in high quality honey um, before everything else you don't need fancy equipment you need nice honey keep that in mind so this has been a lot of fun. If you've enjoyed this traditional recipe, I have a bunch more between buckwheats and I'm working on um, a meadow foam, or I think that's already finished, um, and some other various traditional meads. Those are all very exciting as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I'll be back with some more content and not everything I do is simple traditional mead recipes. I do a lot of A-B testing. I do a lot of weird mead recipes like my Can It Be A Mead series and some other things. So I hope you will check one of those things out. Check out all those on the channel. So see you guys next time. I'm out of mead, but cheers.